I don't want to make this video. This really f***ing sucks. So guys, this week, this video was supposed to be on our 2015 Challenger Hellcat that we just rebuilt with the Whipple 3.8 liter supercharger. Here's proof of life of that car. This week, I have to talk to you guys about my 2023 Red Eye Jailbreak Challenger that I showed you guys last week. So, it's not lost on me that I have a kind of a bad habit of buying a new car, saying it's going to be a long-term car for the channel, and then it randomly disappearing. And it's not going to be any different, I don't think, with this jailbreak, and I'm just going to tell you guys why. So... I've had this car for about a month now and there's been three times that it has not reacted to the key fob like at all or as you hit lock unlock whatever won't do anything and then randomly five ten minutes later everything works fine um on the last time that i had it happen was actually the car was in the garage so it was unlocked so i got in with the fob hit the start button wouldn't do anything hit the start button with the fob in case it was a dead battery still wouldn't do anything wouldn't respond to any commands so it wasn't a huge deal but i'm like okay we got to get this looked at and then the other day i started the car up and it threw up a ton of warning messages it said no bus on the dash service active damping service tpms service stability control service abs the wipers were off but they were going crazy and there's a couple other errors on the dash well none of this is good well, now it's fine i thought okay this isn't good Shut the car off, turned it back on, everything went away. A couple days later, it did the exact same thing. So I thought to myself, okay, you know what? Hopefully it's just a dead battery or a bad battery because battery issues can cause a ton of electric issues in these new cars. So I got it in to, the dealer was able to just take it in right away, not to do like a real deep diagnosis but to take a look and see what's going on they ran a battery test on it and the battery checked out totally fine but the car pit spit out two pages of codes followed by 15 pages of diagnostic snapshots and it looks like this is going to be a real pain in the ass to figure out i've talked to some chrysler techs I've talked to the guys at the dealer he said it's going to be like a game of cat and mouse and i just don't have the time for it guys i don't i've got the 2015 hellcat that you know we're rebuilding that car comes up with enough stuff on its own um it's definitely a lot better you guys will see next week it's pretty much sorted out at this point and we're having a lot of fun with it but i can't maintain a car that's getting built into a race car and that we're going to be putting on engine in a cage and all that and then deal with a brand new car that's potentially a basket case um these issues could be a real easy fix a one and done fix or 
it could really kind of go on forever. The dealership has given me the option to return the car by the end of the month. So I think that's what's going to happen here. Um, I'd like to give them a chance to sort it out. And I know in the last video I was talking about the assembly plant employees and all that. None of this is any of their fault. Um, it could just be a bad module. It could be a pinched wire somewhere in the harness. It could be a bad CAN bus connector. I have no idea. Most of the codes are relating to the BCM and different modules communicating with the BCM. So it could just be a bad BCM. But on top of that, there's also communications codes for the ECM, TCM. There's over voltage codes to the cluster. Like there's all kinds of crazy stuff. 60 to 70% of the stuff lives around the BCM as far as these codes. But there are also other codes as well that lead me to believe that it's going to be a little bit more of a difficult problem to solve than an easy problem. Um, you know, the guys at the dealership said it could be a cat and mouse game to get it sorted out because they're just random and they're communications codes and that's it. So trying to sort it out could be a real big pain in the butt. I don't know if they're going to have to tear whole, half the car apart to get the harness stuff out and with a brand new car, I'm just not interested in it. Like a lot of people kind of have their thresholds for what they'll deal with with a brand new car as far as issues. For me, paint work on a brand new car is a big one, as you guys know. And I got absolutely ripped for on YouTube. So I guess I'll put my flame suit on for this video too, because I imagine that's going to happen again. And electrical issues. I just, I don't want to deal with it with a brand new car. Now... Under normal circumstances, this wouldn't be a hard decision or it wouldn't be stressful because I would just, since I have the opportunity to walk away from the car, I'd walk away from the car and order another one. Well, as you guys know, that's it. It's over. You can't order another one. This car is not replaceable. So it sucks. That's where I'm at with it. I think I'm going to drop the glove box right now because the bcm lives behind there we'll check on a couple connectors there and if it's not something loose then i think i'm just going to let the car go back to the dealer i'm curious to hear what you guys would do in this situation in the comments down below but um yeah so what i'll do um we'll set up the camera there so you guys can watch we'll get in behind the glove box some of the connectors around the bcm and see if it's anything like that unfortunately the dealer can't get to it right away because their tech that deals with all the electrical stuff is on vacation so i've got a couple days to make a decision and i'm pretty mechanically inclined so i'll take a quick look myself maybe we get lucky but i have a feeling that it's not going to work out so well all right guys so i'm going to show you what i did here so i dropped the glove box out and in here is the BCM. I've checked all those connectors. All of those are tight. Here's something I did notice, though. So this is the bus here. I notice this guy right here, NHP. That might have been loose because that just popped itself right out. And these are all tight in here, so it shouldn't just pop out like that. I don't know if that would cause the issues that we've been having, but come on, focus. There we go. That's it. There is another one here, but it's taped back to the harness, so it looks like it's not supposed to be plugged in. So I'll plug this NHP one back into the bus, and we'll see what happens. All right, so I've got everything back together. Um, the only thing that I did find is that one star connector on the bus that was loose. Um, that very well could be been the majority of the problems, although we do have lost communication with ECM codes as well from the TCM and PCM. So this is everything that the car printed out at the dealer here. So this is the codes and all of the snapshots 
I think what I'm going to do, so I'm gonna grab my dongle. I'm gonna grab Alpha OBD. I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna see if there's any comm codes in the car right now. And then what I'll do is clear the codes and see if any more came up. Like I said, guys, it's like really difficult. I don't wanna just give up on this car, but if it's going to uh, be an ongoing issue, I'd rather just give it back. So let's take a look at the comm codes and see what we've got going on. All right, so now we've got the dongle plugged in. We've got the car in the run position. I'm going to check the codes on o Alpha OBD. The one thing I did notice so here, so it says ECU verification failed. Failed to receive ISO code. The connection device, connected device cannot be verified by Alpha OBD. Press continue to proceed with the diagnostics. Be aware that it is not guaranteed the diagnostics will be correct. Or press cancel to terminate the connection. Um, because we're not writing to the computer, we're just reading. I don't think that has anything to do with using like a security bypass module. I think it might just be that this car is so new, the 2023, that maybe it's just not set up in Alpha OBD yet, but we'll hit continue and let's see if we get code. So let's go read all faults. Connected device model, not determined. Read code. So, we're not going to be able to figure it out. It's actually not doing anything. It just says status connected, device model not determined. So I don't think we're going to be able to get anywhere there. When the codes were coming up, they weren't showing up on the dash. So there's going to be no way really to verify whether that fixed it or not. Um, other than whether the car has another fit when we start it up. So I'm just going to start it up real quick here. Should be fine. Most of the time it is, but you never know. It's kind of doing a little bit of a misfire here at idle, but Weird. Well, there's no way to verify. Maybe what I'll do is get the dealer to run the codes again if they have time tomorrow. And we'll go from there. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think I should do. Should I just give the car back and walk away? It's, I mean, there's no cost out of my pocket if I do that. I just worry about keeping the car if it's going to be a basket case with electrical issues down the road. And I really need to just be able to focus on one car. That's our 2015 Challenger Hellcat instead of going in and out of the shop with this thing. Now we did find that loose star connector. Was that the issue? I don't know. Guess we'll find out, but I've only got until Thursday to make up my mind because I am leaving out of town for the weekend on Friday. So let me know about it down below. I know not a super exciting video. This is not the video that I had planned on coming out for you guys this week. But we'll see you guys in the next one, which will be about our 2015 Challenger Hellcat. Take care.